Hello and welcome to match day 21 of Championship Predictions from the Honest Football Podcast. I'm Craig Savage and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. Let's have a quick recap what we predicted at match day 20 and let's get on to match day 20. No, I'm just joking. Uh, it was horrendous this week. Three points for me, one point for Daniel Cody. It's probably the worst we've ever done. It's probably been the worst week, two sets of fixtures we've ever, ever done. Uh, no perfect scores. Daniel Cody's only point was the first game on Friday night and it was just horrendous. So let's forget match day 20. Let's get to match day 21. Let's start off with a big game. It's the first versus second. It's Fulham versus Bournemouth. Fulham drew 1-1. Controversial goal they conceded. Bournemouth blew a two-goal lead and had a man's off. Yeah, I think, to be fair, early doors, this is arguably the right race for the title, isn't it? Because let's be honest, the teams below keep faltering and it doesn't look like anyone's going to catch these two, albeit Bournemouth aren't in the best form. Uh, Coventry scored a great goal against them, which we'll get to later. There was a bit of debate about whether or whether it wasn't meant. Um, but yeah, cross. as you... Sorry? It was a cross. No, I'm not having that. He looked up the cross. He looked... Well, there you go. It's a perfect debate, isn't it? Um, but yeah, Bournemouth, again, after looking so solid for so long, defensive frailty is really coming to the fore. Another two conceded. That's three times in their last five games they've let in two or more. And Fulham are just starting to drop off as well. A couple of draws, but keeping the unbeaten run going. And I know you said the, the goal was a little bit controversial, but I think Preston certainly had at least an even chance in that game. They were fantastic. They played really well. Fulham struggled a little bit to cope with that. I think they were a bit surprised by the way Preston played, but they're still not losing and you can't back them to lose at home. They've been absolutely brilliant all year. Only lost the one game there, but Bournemouth are the best away team in the league. So everything would suggest this is going to be a cagey, boring and poor TV pick. I'm going to go for the Championship's favourite scoreline of one all, but I will not be surprised if it's goalless. Um, Scotty Parker obviously comes back to the cottage for the first time since he left in the summer. I don't expect, I don't expect it to be a good game. I, I really don't. I think that it feels like a top Premier League game, as in when I say top Premier League, like it's going to be tight, it's going to be cagey, it's not going to be much in it. Kind of similar to like Chelsea, man. I, I think I know Chelsea had all the possession, but that's, that's the Premier League together. But it's tight and cagey. So I'm going to go with a, a win. For Fulham, body of goal, one nil. Right, start off on Saturday. It's the early kickoff. It is Coventry City versus West Bromwich Albion. Coventry obviously rescued that two-two draw against Bournemouth. West Brom, another goalless draw. Yeah, I, I've got to say, I know that West Brom have come down, but the TV picks are starting to astound me now. So in these two teams combined, their last six games, they've scored in one of them, which was Coventry at the weekend against Bournemouth. West Brom not scored more than one in a game since October. They've been really poor in front of goal. And those moments of magic are drying up that we were seeing from the likes of Carl and Grant. They've actually dropped down to fourth in the league now. And there's starting to be those little murmurings about Valerian Ishmael. But I think you've got to give it a little bit of time. Although you could argue Darren Moore was in a similar position when he was let go from West Brom a couple of years back. Uh, Coventry, really good point. Spirited performance. I know the Birmingham game wasn't great. And I know, again, the goals had dried up for them a little bit. But Coventry at home, you can't back against them, can you? Regardless of how much poorer they've been in recent games at home and the fact they've either faltered to wins or struggled to get results, I think they're going to win this game because West Brom are out of form. And I think this could be the game where it really starts to go wrong. I'm going to go for a comfortable 2-0 Coventry win. And I think Ishmael will have the pressure cranked up on him a little bit. Yeah, I, I think we've got to give Coventry a lot of credit for taking advantage of the extra man. As I said, it was a cross. Uh, I'm not sure on the away kit as well. I, I, I'm not a fan of that. But um, yeah, I have to give them a lot of credit for that. It's a good 2-2 draw. West Brom are faltering, looking really sloppy. This doesn't surprise me with West Brom. I know. I think I probably picked them to win it. But this this rich man, I think it was coming. Like I, was, watch, I think I was watching against QPR like when it was on Sky about six weeks ago, and they were poor then, and I wasn't really convinced by them. But Coventry's home form is very good. It's a bit of a Midlands derby in itself. I think Coventry will sneak this one as well. I think Coventry will win this one 2-1. They will. They are capable of couples, uh, conceding goals now at home. So, But I think 2-1 to Coventry will be, hopefully, be the right result. Right, next up, it's another York. It's a Yorkshire derby this time. It is Barnsley versus Huddersfield. Um, positives for Barnsley is that they actually kept a clean sheet. Huddersfield... Mm-hmm got torn apart in the first half yeah I've got to say actually Barnsley I know it's not a great result but it might be a positive after conceding so many 
in the games prior to that. It was 11 in the five before. To keep a clean sheet is great, but it's against the side in 22nd and it's now an eight-point goal to the, to the outside the relegation zone despite Reading's point deduction. It's a big problem and a big concern for them. The results need to come quickly. It's four without a win now since that Derby game. And Huddersfield, they're also starting to lose their form. They're not a good side away from home. But we haven't seen many of those, as you mentioned, first half capitulations like we saw against Borough. I know Watmore scored a good goal. We'll get onto that later. But I'm a little bit concerned about both of these teams at the moment. Huddersfield had a great start. They're reliant on their home form now. I think that's fair to say. And Barnsley, one of the worst teams in the league, home and away. But they have won a home game this season. I don't think that's going to happen here. I'm going to have to sit on the fence and go for a draw. I'm going to go for championship's favourite scoreline again, I think. Uh, no, I, I think this is where Huddersfield bounce back. They, they are in that inconsistent mode at the moment. Eight wins and eight losses. It's, that's where the inconsistent comes in. Barnsley, you could say that's obviously it is a positive point. A clean sheet is obviously a massive positive for the defence. I think this bit of a, obviously where the three games a week has kicked in for uh, Barnsley for the new manager or head coach, shall I say, he hasn't really had time to work in the training ground. So that's any bit of negative I've got on that, but that's not his fault. But I think Huddersfield will win this derby by two goals to nil. Right, let's keep going with derbies. It is Blackburn versus Preston in a Lancashire derby. Blackburn, classic Mike O'Neill special with a 1-0 win at Stoke. Preston with that one all draw against Fulham. Yeah, as you say, Blackburn, Michael O'Neill, Michael O'Neill. And they didn't have much of the game. They had two shots on target. I mean, it was a poor game anyway. I don't think too many people expected it to be high scoring, but... They got the victory. And the thing we've levelled at Blackburn for a long time is that they are very inconsistent. I know they started last season quite well, but this time around, I know they had the 7-0 against Fulham, but apart from that, they've been very consistent for the last couple of months. And they are obviously up in those playoff places now. I think Preston were really good against Fulham. I think they put in one of their best performances of the season, backed up the great midweek win at Borough. And to be fair, they're not looking like they're under any threat now. They're level on points with the likes of Forrest and Luton, who we've both praised earlier in the season. So I think they're starting to look up now. They're closer to the playoffs than the relegation zone. With the squad that he's got, I think Frankie McAvoy's done a good job, and I'll happily say that I was wrong on that one. But I think this will be too far. I think you have to back Blackburn. They always score. They've kept a couple of clean sheets in a row, and they're good at home. I'm going to go for... Look, they score goals for fun. 3-1 Blackburn at home. Uh, no, totally disagree. This has got a draw written all over it. I'll be honest. Um, I don't know why. Obviously, Blackburn's fought them. It's very good. Three wins out of five. Preston, on the other hand, two wins out of five. Two defeats in that five as well. But they, they did spring a good result against a very good for them side. And do you think they could probably get another draw out of that? I do agree with that. I'm going for my first time. This weekend's championship hope score line of 1-1. One, one. Well, after three straight derbies, let's go for the, the 2017 League 2 playoff semi-final derby. It is Blackpool versus Luton Town, a game that you are going to, Mr. Daniel Cody. Blackpool, uh, a surprising away defeat to Birmingham. Luton, obviously at home to Cardiff. Can't beat Cardiff for any day. And uh, it was another defeat for Nathan Jones' side. Yeah, and... If you concede the last two home defeats where Luton are normally very strong against Stoke and Cardiff, two games where they've been outbattled, maybe outpaced a little bit. They look half a yard slower. Um, and obviously after a more positive performance against Forest, particularly defensively, to go back to the same old mistakes at the back, the goal's literally identical. Ball into the back post. Of the three centre-halves you've got in the box, the one thing you don't expect is a free header. But it was a simple move, midfielder peeling off the centre of the three and leaving themselves unmarked. So, uh, it's a, a little... centre-half. I know. A little bit of work to do. Yes, yeah, centre half, second half, centre mid, first half, oh. and both of them just peeled off the back of the middle centre half. It's too easy uh, for a championship level. Blackpool had a big penalty shout against Birmingham, but it is five without a win now. And I know they're not conceding goals; they're only letting in one most games. They're not scoring goals either, so definitely a concern for both teams. Both have really had the goals dry up recently. Blackpool had the return of Shane Lavery, which is a, a positive start. But Luton look out of form. And I hate to say it because I'm travelling in the bitter cold and spending a lot of money to go and see this game. But I think it's going to be nil-nil. I am going to go 1-1. One, one. I'll happily take the point because the the, the goal, the set, I'm going to criticise the second goal more than the first goal because it, the fact that Morrison has space in the centre of the goal, Blackpool and obviously losing the Birmingham, that would, uh, that would 
I think confidence is just starting to go a little bit for Blackpool, which is a bit of a shame. Champions favourite scoreline of 1-1 for me, but I think that's, to be honest, is where Luton surprised me and pick up a very good three points, but I'll take 1-1. Right, next up is the Chris Martin derby. It is Bristol City versus Derby. Okay, I'll stop with the derbies now. Bristol City lost 2 0 to Sheffield United. Derby lost late to QPR. Um, there was a nasty head injury to was it Nathan Baker, wasn't it? So obviously, wish him the speed of recovery. Thoughts? Well, I think Bristol City were probably victims of a new manager bounce. We'll be interested to see how long that lasts. We'll talk about it with Sheffield United, but it's always hard going up the first home game. Uh, away from home against a side with a new manager. And Bristol City's form was completely flipped. They've now lost three away games in a row and are unbeaten in three home games. It's astonishing from where they were a month ago. Uh, Derby, it was cruel, but it's a familiar pattern this season. A lot of late goals. I think it was 17 points now they've relinquished from winning positions, which just shows you the small squad with three games a week. We said even two, three months ago it was going to start to catch up and it is doing now. Another late goal against them there. Derby, do you know what? They've been very solid away from home. They've only let in nine goals in 10 games. They've still only managed one win. The goals are a problem. I think they're going to lose this one. And with Bristol City's newfound home form, I'm going to go for the classic exciting 1-0 win. I'm going to go the opposite way. I think Derby might sneak this one. Um, obviously, yeah, we, we talk about, obviously, they're not scoring as much. They only had one shot on target against QPR, and that was the Lawrence goal. They've, I think they've always had a problem all season trying to score goals, Derby. It's not like they've had a really convincing victory. Bristol City, on the other hand, yeah, they lost 2-0 to Sheffield United. You could say new manager bounce, but yada, yada, yada. I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm still, obviously, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't been convincing this Bristol City side for a very long time. Uh, nine defeats now in the league. It's not looking pretty, but home form's getting better. And they went after this weekend because I'm going to go Derby to win 2-1. Right, next up at the Cardiff City Stadium, it is Cardiff versus Sheffield United. Cardiff, a 2-1 win at Luton. It's uh, Steve Morrison's form still going well. Sheffield United, a first win for Paul Heckenbottom. Yeah, it was a very good start for him. A very comfortable performance. I think we mentioned in the last one, Bristol City weren't great. Um, but based on the performance, we might have to eat our words because they played higher up the pitch. They created a lot more chances and got players in scoring positions. And two of the strikers scoring is a, a rarity this season for Sheffield United. So positive signs there. Cardiff, I mean, I mentioned it in the Luton one. They, do you know what? I know it's a very simple thing to say, and it sounds like a cop-out, but the biggest difference from watching them on TV under Mick McCarthy to now under Steve Morrison is just how much harder they're working. They're not pressing much higher up the pitch, but they're very quick to engage when Luton got into that final third. They were very strong and powerful and organised at the back. And maybe it's just a confidence thing because obviously three wins out of four now, all by two goals to one. And I'm tempted to back it again. But at home, Cardiff have actually been the worst team in the league this season. They've only got seven points from 10 games. Sheffield United on the road, ironically, probably been slightly better. Now they've picked up a couple of left points, but comparatively to the league. Three unbeaten for them. I'm going to back them to get a win. I think this is going to be a surprise. I'm going to go for... 2-0 to Sheffield United, but the new manager bounce ends after that. I haven't had the wild one yet. Um, I don't think this is ever going to happen, but it probably will. Uh, I'm going to go 2-2 in this game. I think if Paul Heckenbaum can get the goals, the goals back into this side, obviously with Billy Sharp and Brewster scoring at the weekend, that's a massive plus for them. If, if Cardiff can do it on the set piece, I don't know. If, if you can get the crosses like they did with both goals on Saturday, yeah, it can cause them harm. So yeah, 2-2 for me. Right, next up, it is Millsborough versus Swansea. A very good first half for Millsborough at Huddersfield with Duncan Watmore's goals. And Swansea, a surprising home defeat to Reading. Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a weird game. Uh, I think Reading pulled Swansea into the trap a couple of times, but there were some really poor goals there. I mean, the offside line that they were trying to play for Andy Carroll's goal was bizarre. And it, uh, Andy Carroll scored a lot of goals in his career. He's a very good footballer, but he very rarely makes a break the offside line run from halfway and then runs through on goal with uh, a lack of pace. So as well as he finished it pretty nicely, Swansea have got to be concerned about some of the defending. They always look a threat in front of goal, though. You've got to give them that. I think they will bounce back in this one. Middlesbrough, really good first half. One of Duncan Watmore's goals was brilliant. He's been, for me, probably their, their shining light this season. And I think he'll be a key part of Chris Wilder's plans. But for some reason, I've just got a feeling that Swansea might nick this one. And I, it's one of those where you just have to go on a hunch. I don't have any stats behind it, but I'm going to go for Swansea to win by two goals to one. And I think it'll probably be one of the more entertaining games of the week. 
I don't know about this game. I really don't know because obviously that was a good uh, Millsborough obviously very good in the first half. They carved up Huddersfield open. The, the Swansea goals they can see were rubbish. I mean, so so poor. And Swansea, I, I was going for like where I read this stat. I can't remember where I read it. Well, Swansea obviously their passing possession is ridiculously high, the highest in the championship. That's all well and good, but you've got to get the ball in the back, back of the air. That's the whole game of football. And that's, um, I think, they, when they cause their own mistakes, which is like a high line, that's where you're going to get found out. But I'm going to go 1-0 Millsborough. Right, next up at the new den, it is Millwall versus Birmingham. Uh, Millwall, they lost to Hull. Um, Hull, obviously, in very good form at the moment. And Birmingham with a very good 1-0 win against Blackpool. Yeah, absolutely. And as you were saying, you're not a big fan of the overly ticky tack of possession football at Swansea play. Well, this is the game for you, Craig, because there is not going to be an awful lot of it here. Uh... <laughs> Ball in the air. That's what I want to see. We will, see a, we will see a fair few crosses in this one. Of course, these are two of the sides that are sort of in that middle mix. Two, one point separates them. There's what, ninth to 17th separated by two points. It's mad at this stage. Some concerns at Millwall, four games in a row where they've conceded. It was just, again, the defending within the within the width of the area wasn't good enough for Millwall. And it's something we, we sort of pride their side on for being good defending crosses, defending low balls across the box. And it didn't look the same there. Birmingham, good win. We mentioned the fact that perhaps there was a penalty shout the other way. It was a 50-51. It was a very interesting game. But Birmingham got the win. And you've got to give it to them after a couple of poor defeats, uh, a dull draw against Coventry. They got the job done and they stay in that mix. I haven't got a clue what to go for in this game. Everything in my head is telling me it'll be goalless. But I don't want another boring weekend of fixtures. Surely we can't have three in a row where there's next to no goals. So as a result, Millwall bounce back. 1-0 Millwall. Mm, it's another game, but uh, I think the Birmingham result surprised me. It's a good win. Jukovic scoring late on. That will obviously that will give them a confidence boost. I don't, it's just... Weird with Millwall. I think we always say about Millwall. They've always been an inconsistent, weird side. And I didn't expect them to lose to Hull. I know, obviously, Hull being in good form, but I just didn't expect it. But this game could really kick off on the pitch and probably off the pitch. I'm going to go Champions League scoreline of 1-1. One, one. Right, next up is Nottingham Forest versus Peterborough. Nottingham Forest, only one shot on target in the last two games. Obviously, both games finished nil-nil for them. Peterborough... 0-0 against Barnsley. So, obviously, these two teams had 0-0 the last two, well, both last games. Do you expect another 0-0? I don't, because Peterborough away from home, as we saw in the two games previous, are a very different proposition. And they've conceded 28 goals in 10 games on the road, Craig. It's not going to be 0-0, surely. I know Forrest have got one of the poorer home records. I know that as well as those two 0-0s, three of the four games before that were one or draws. But when they played a, a lower mid-table team at home in Preston, they won 3-0. And I can't see past them winning this. Peterborough are, I know they're against the Barney side who could barely score at the weekend. They are so brittle defensively on the road. And I think they have to fight their battles, but they risk getting cut adrift as well. They're now four points behind Reading. I think it's a comfortable Forest win. It's surely a return to form. Or are we going to say for another year, what on earth's going on with the strikers? Is it starting again? I'm sticking with 2-0 Forest. I think it'll be a comfortable win. I think Forest will get back to scoring goals. I think um, Forest had two tough games. One being Luton and the other one being West Brom. And I think they'll be happy. Obviously, they are going to be happy with at least one point in both games because Forrest were down 10 megas Luton, obviously had to hold on. And obviously, West Brom with aerial threat. I think Forrest would be delighted with how they held out on that. So I might criticise the lack of goals, but you have to you have to give them credit on defensive wise. Obviously, two clean sheets and that. Uh, but I think they will go back to scoring goals. I think Forrest will win this game 3 1. Final game on Saturday. It is Reading versus Hull. Hull, probably one of the most important teams in the championship. We never thought we'd say that uh, in this season. But Reading obviously won at Swansea. Andy Carroll and Danny Drinkwater, the forgotten men of the like recent Premier League era, uh, both scored. I have to question the celebration for Andy Carroll. Yeah, a bit of a weird celebration, but we shouldn't dwell on that too much because it was the only thing we got right in the last match day. You saying Andy yes, Carroll I got it right. Scored. Yes. I did. It's the only thing we predicted. That should be worth 20 points. <laughs> we just need it to make us look better at the minute. But it was a really good win. They took advantage of poor defensive lapses from Swansea. And they're a little bit inconsistent, but we've said it for every now and then. They just pick up a result every three or four games, and it's just enough. I mean, despite the points deduction, they're outside the relegation zone. And you'd have to argue it's going to be 
hard pressed for the bottom three not to be the bottom three at the end of the year. And that's because where has Hull's form come from? Four wins in a row from nine points up to 21, just like that. And they look comfortable now. It's really bizarre. The fact that they've been scoring goals and two in three of those four games is brilliant. But probably even more impressively, they've only let in one goal in those four games, which I would never have expected at the start. I know they're always susceptible to the aerial threat. And I feel if Andy Carroll starts, perhaps those set pieces goals may come back again. But I genuinely have no idea what to predict it. I've got a sneaky suspicion this is going to be the thriller of the weekend. And I think the score is going to be 3-3. You're going for 3-3. I'm going for (laughs) (laughs) 0-0. I don't know. I think, um, obviously, with Reading's points deduction, they'll probably be pushing a bit too hard to score and it might be a bit too much. Hull, on the other hand, very good form at the moment. I'm happy for them. I think a point away from home here will be another good result. I don't think this will be the game of the weekend at all. Uh, I'm going go for nil-nil, unfortunately. And the final game on Sunday is live on Sky again. It's QPR. They are at home to Stoke City. Uh, QPR won late from Andre Gray's Weldy. And Stoke lost to Blackburn. Yeah, a bit of a worry for Stoke that the home form's drying up as well now. Because away from home, they haven't been great this season. QPR, look. We can keep criticising them. They've been a little bit boring to watch since they've been on Sky. Perhaps not wanting to give away too much to the cameras and have their star players chased by Premier League teams in January. But they're just quietly ticking along. Nobody's really talking about them other than to moan about how much they're on TV. And they're now up to third place and the closest challenges for Bournemouth and Fulham. So you've got to give them amazing credit. They've become very good defensively. We've mentioned with the amount of quality players they've got going forward, they're always going to have a goal in them, whether it's Lyndon Dykes, Charlie Austin, Andre Gray, Elias Chair, Willock, whoever, it doesn't matter. There's hundreds of them. They've got such a, an abundance of quality. They've got one of the best six squads in the championship. And Stoker in poor form, two 1 0 defeats in a row. Before that, yes, they were keeping clean sheets, but they weren't scoring a lot of goals. Am I finally going to bank on one of these TV games delivering? I think I am. I'm going to end on two crazy results in a row. I'm going to go for QPR to win by three goals to nil. No, I, I, um, I'm i going to go for a 2-2 draw. I just feel like QPR, obviously, yeah, they're, obviously, they've won their games and I want QPR to be up there, to be honest. I think we tipped them to be up there come the end of the season, but obviously they're picking up results. It's fine. But I just feel like it's going to hit a point where they're just going to lose and lose badly. I don't think it'll be this game, though. I really don't. I think it'd be a bit of a culture shock. I think maybe the expectation might be a bit too much. I think, oh, we've been beating Derby. They're not going to lose, but they're going to draw. 2-2 will be the final score, hopefully. Let's have a quick recap what we predicted for match day 21. And for me, Nottingham Forest is the only team I predicted to score more than two goals. Daniel Coe's two wild scores. Obviously, the free throw between Reading and Hull. And QPR to win 3 0 against Stoke and those are predictions for match day 21 do you agree with us or disagree with us let us know in the comment section down below give us your predictions for this weekend's action don't forget to like this video subscribe to the honest football podcast and you can follow us on twitter at honest football free and we'll see you next time